Hello there friends and fellow makers, Bill here in the shop and I've got hopefully a quick project for you today. I got a message from none other than Captain Disillusion with a quest. A small project, a small prop that he needed for an upcoming video and uh, I figured it was something I could probably knock out really quickly. So I said yes and here is what it is. He needed a small vacuum formed uh, panel for a spaceship like you do, you know. Uh, and he had already designed this, so he sent me the 3D file for the panel and I 3D printed it. This is uh, printed in ABS plastic on my Ultimaker. I 3D printed it to be a vacuum form buck. So, I need to do a couple of things before I can lay some hot plastic down on this, including a little bit of sanding, maybe a little bit of filling, and I wanna drill some holes through this because there are some small details and little cavities that probably won't get any air pulling the plastic down into it. So I'm gonna add some holes. Now, could I have added those to the model before I 3D printed them? Yes. Why didn't I do that? Because I just thought of it right now. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to manually drill some holes. Uh, but let's get started with some filling and some sanding. The 3D print left some little gaps. I think my printer is under extruding just a little bit. These little gaps here, I don't wanna show up as a texture on the uh, vacuum form. So I have some spot putty. I can just go in there and fill those little low spots. Okay, that is all done. I gotta let that dry, but while it's drying, I'm gonna head over to the drill press, drill a whole bunch of holes in it. Let's see, 564th, that sounds right. Get this all lined up and chucked up. Ugh, raise this up a little bit. And then I can set the depth so I don't keep punching way down into that thing. So that'll be repeatable. And then I'm just gonna aim for any low spots especially in really tight areas, maybe through these crevices there. Anywhere where I feel like it's not gonna be able to pull air out the sides. The holes are all drilled all the way through in spots where I think that it needs it. Uh, and now this should be dry enough to sand. I just have some 220 grit sandpaper and I'm gonna sand the top of this nice and smooth. Got some 400 grit here and I'm just wet sanding it. This, this surface is gonna be the most prominent in the vacuum form pull and I want to make sure it's as smooth as possible. Eventually it's going to get sprayed with a chrome paint to make it really shiny from the inside and I want to make sure we don't see any sanding marks left behind. Okay, I'm feeling pretty okay about this and I think we can give it a shot and try and pull some plastic over it. So why don't I get that plastic ready? I bought a two foot square piece of plastic because my uh, frame that I made can accommodate a one foot square piece of plastic. So I can cut this into quarters and get four pulls out of it. That is, that is the plan anyway. Cut in straight lines like a pro. I'm going with PETG on this one. That's what I do most of my vacuum forming with because it's easy. It doesn't bubble or anything. And this is 0.03 inches. And I went with this thinner stuff because there's so many little details in our model that uh, I wanna make sure I can get down in there.
using my sweet maker knife from my buddy Jaco, who just finished his Kickstarter for the kinetic screwdriver, which I also backed, and it just finished to great success. So good for you, Jaco. Proud of you, buddy. And I really love my maker knife. Okay, we don't need the protective sheeting on either side. And what are you doing, sticker? And I have this new frame to put it in, and that fits just how I planned it for my clamps. Just using binder clips for this. These are awesome if you're doing a DIY vacuum former. I actually have a video showing how to make a vacuum former out of a toaster oven. So if you're just getting into this, that's an awesome place to start and it cost almost no money at all. All good to go. Let's head over to the vacuum former. Here's the newer smaller platen and our pattern is gonna go on there. To make sure that our plastic doesn't stick or hope that it doesn't stick anyway, I'm gonna cover it in some baby powder. That's sort of like a release. Yeah, just spread it around. It may stick a bit. We've vacuum formed on ABS plastic before and it worked out okay. The baby powder will definitely help though. It's a rattle. Okay, everything's ready to go. Got my vacuum plugged in. That's, that's the song of Vlad the Inhaler. <laughs> uh, this goes in there, and we let it we let it heat up. Of course, this machine is called Count Vacula. The uh, the pattern's only about that thick, so we don't want this to sag very much. In fact, we're pretty close. Another few seconds here and then we'll zip it on there and then Brit will hit the, the vacuum and hopefully it works out great. Okay, I think we're ready to go. And going up and down and go. Okay, it mostly worked. Let's see if that wants to pop right out. That's cool. Okay. Okay, that looks awesome. <laughs> uh, it didn't pull down into the details as much as we wanted it to, but it definitely got a lot of the details, which looks really neat. That looks pretty good. It didn't go down into the details like I really wanted it to, but that was a pretty tall order. This plastic, um, if I could get thinner plastic, I would, but this is what I have. Uh, I am going to give it another shot though, and I think what I'll do is let this sag. I only let it sag down to about here, maybe double that so it's a little more melty and see if that gets better results. I think I can work with this one so I can be a little bit wild and crazy with this one. We'll see how it goes. It's starting to get a little wobbly. Let's do this. Go. Ta-da! Ooh, that is a little a little better. I think that's about as good as we're gonna get it though. But that looks pretty nice. Time to trim these out, and instead of drawing a line, I'm just using tape to make a line across the area where I want to trim it. There we go. Don't need that. A little bit of blowout from the cutting. So just clean that up a bit. I'm gonna paint the inside of this panel with some mirror chrome paint, which is gonna look amazing. But I wanna make sure that this is all tidy on the inside, all clean. So I've got some alcohol and I'm gonna wipe it all down. Make sure there's no finger grease or any of that baby powder left in here so we have a nice, smooth, and clean surface. 
I'm masking off the outside of this. I'm gonna spray in here. I just don't want any getting on the side. And the magic trick. It looks so shiny. Ooh, yeah. Oh, that's satisfying. Oh, how good does that look? Man, that looks so cool. So cool. Okay, we have another step to go. I'm gonna move this over to a piece of foam and we're gonna cut out a foam frame for it. Making about a uh, quarter inch border around this. That looks very nice. Got to cut out a hole in the middle. There we go. There's the frame that this is gonna sit in. And now I need to cut a little trench for this to kind of rest in. I'm just scoring a line down. I'm not cutting all the way through. If everything went according to plan, this should just fit right in there. Oh, and it is. Look at that. That is really snug. I may not even have to put any glue in there. <laughs> that looks pretty cool, Britt. I love it. I am gonna glue it. Let's just put a little, little glue in there. Tack that down. Let's do the corners first. Should be enough to just hold it in place. Yeah. It's all done. Not bad for a couple hours of work. This little panel completed and ready to get sent off to Captain Disillusion. And when his video comes out, we'll have a link to that down in the description so you can go check it out. Uh, one of the reasons why we use the, um, that mirror chrome paint is because from this side, it looks perfectly shiny and chrome, but if you shine a light through it, the light shows up just fine. And I believe that's one of the reasons why he wanted this panel for the effects in his video, but his video isn't done yet, so I don't know. Boop. That'll wrap it up for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you're new, please hit that subscribe button. We have a ton more prop and costume videos if you want to go check those out. And as always, a special thank you to the members of our Extra Credit Club for whom which these videos would not be possible if it weren't for their support. Thank you so much. If you'd like to join, there's a link down below. You can join either on Patreon or right here on YouTube memberships. And we do uh, weekly behind the scenes videos for those members in appreciation for their support. Thanks again so much for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video where we make something else that's probably just as ridiculous.